I'm here with Russell Fulbaum, a spray contractor from the Darling Downs. Russell, you've been spraying for a couple of decades in this area where you know, it can be quite a complex environment with strip cropping, sensitive areas, um, double cropping. I imagine that uh, drift control is really important to your business. What are some of the things that you do to try and minimise spray drift when you're doing a job? Bill nozzles are probably the most important uh, consideration, uh, making sure you've got the right droplet size for the, for the job. And um, uh, adjuvants are also a big help to us um, in uh, maintaining that droplet size in, in uh, diverse conditions and a good relationship with your agronomist that you can modify the, the recommendation to suit the, the conditions and the, the location. So all those things together and, and, and basically being prepared to wait for good conditions to do the job. Um, you know, sometimes you might have to roll your swag out and, um, and camp at the paddock or, or um, uh, be there at the right time uh, monitoring the, the weather conditions from your local weather stations or whatever and, and picking a time that is going to be good rather than a time that that's, might suit you. Recently we've seen changes to uh, 2,4-D use through uh, labels and permits um, requiring either very coarse or extremely coarse droplets or larger. I notice on your machine you've got nozzles that will actually do that. Um, how long have you been using extremely coarse? Yes, we've been using um, TTIs on a, on a um, reasonably regular basis now for probably four or five years. They're um, very useful um, for, um, for that minimising drift and, and having them available to, um, to do things like 2,4-D, uh, very important, particularly on a triple nozzle body where you can quickly change to them if the conditions change or if you change products. Going to larger droplet sizes, particularly with products like glyphosate and 2,4-D, have you seen any real drop in efficacy? No, not, not really. The, um, the main thing is to increase your water rates if you're um, going to that coarser droplet um, and yeah, be prepared to um, possibly reduce your travel speed slightly and um, those sort of things all will help uh, still get a good job. Yeah, so you mentioned that relationship with the agronomist, higher water rates, the right sort of nozzles and travel speed and obviously conditions. Note on your machine that you've uh, got a narrow nozzle spacing. Does that help you manage your boom height better? Yeah. You can get a, a slightly lower boom height with the double spacings. Like some machines have come pre-plumbed with the uh, 250 mil spacing. So that's very useful, um, very useful tool to be able to put up uh, every nozzle down and, uh, and get a what I call a double-double overlap. And you find that boom height has an effect on the amount of drift you get out of the machine? Most definitely. It's, it's very, um, very critical to maintain that, um, that lower boom height if you're trying to reduce your, your off-target movement. In talking to Russell, we've heard a number of things about ways that he manages and reduces spray drift. Some of those things were obviously the nozzle selection and making sure that you've got the, the right droplet size to match the label or, or permit requirements. But in moving to larger droplets, um, his experience is that you don't lose efficacy provided your water volume's sufficient. And obviously that relationship with his advisor and talking about the situations. Other things in the paddock such as uh, boom height and travel speed all add to the ability to get a good job and minimise the amount of drift you're likely to get.